Good morning, mathematicians. We are looking at Tuesday. We're starting with Dwayne, the Sock Johnson. And he has 7,569 socks in his cupboard. He wants to put them into pairs. How many pairs of socks will he have? Will he have any leftover? So we are going to be taking this number of socks and we're going to be partnering the socks or pairing the socks, right? To figure out how many pairs he has. So really, we're asking ourselves about dividing. So here we're really saying, if we have 7,569 socks and we put them in groups of two, how many groups of two can we get? This is a division problem. So let's do a little partial quotient. And let's first start by thinking, hmm, what could I do? Could I take um, 100 groups of two? Well, that would be too small. That would only account for 200 of this very large number, right? Could I take 1,000 groups of two? Sure. But I can go even bigger here. What about if I start with taking 3,000 groups of two socks? Well, two times three is six. So two times 3,000 is 6,000. Notice that's going to use up a large portion of this. So that's how I know that that's a good place to start, right? Now I can subtract to see how many socks we've used up. Well, I know that we've used up 1,569 pairs of socks so far. Now, I can't take another group of 1,000 socks because I would need 2,000 socks for that, right? I don't have 2,000 anymore. So, huh, what could I do now? Let's go ahead and think about 700. If I have 700 pairs of socks, that's 700 times 2. Well, remember that basic fact with zero trick. 2 times 7 is 14, and then there are two zeros outside that basic fact. So that's going to use up a lot of socks. Here I have a difference of 169. So now I only have 169 more socks to use up. Huh, well, what could I do now? What about if I make 80 pairs? 80 times 2 is going to be 160 socks. So now I only have 9 socks left over right? Well, I can't make an even number of socks from that because I would need an even number. But here I could go ahead and do four more pairs. Four times two is eight. And when I subtract, I do find that I have a remainder of one. So now what my task is, is to combine all of these groups to figure out how many pairs of socks we got. Well, really we got 3,000 784 with a remainder of 1. 3,784 with a remainder of 1. I like to write those quantities here as I divide just to keep it almost like a little running record. Sometimes in illustrative math, as you'll see in uh, fourth grade, they'll have you recorded at the top, but certainly whether they're at the side or at the top, we're still arriving at the same quotient. So, how many pairs will he have? He has 3,784 pairs and one left over. There always seems to be one sock left over that doesn't have a partner. And sure enough, that even happens here with Dwayne the Sock Johnson. All right, let's leave that behind. And now let's make our way to another volume question, just as we saw yesterday in our Monday column. This one is asking us to intentionally look at layering first. The first question says, how many layers does it have? So I'm gonna look and see there's a layer here and here and here and here. There are four layers in my structure, or I could say a height of four. So I'm gonna write here that there are four layers. Now it asks what the overall volume is. So now let's analyze the length and width of this prism as well. We can count them. One, two, three. This has a width of three. Let's take a look here. One, two, three, four. This has a length of four. So really, boys and girls, we could use the volume formula here. Volume equals length times width times height. And now let's exchange this for a length of four, a width of three, 
at a height of four, right? Well, I know that three times four is 12. And now I carry down that height. I'm gonna do one more. I know that 12 times four is 48. And that tells me the exact volume of this is 48 cubic centimeters. I only know it's centimeters, not by the structure, but by the answer structure that they've given me. So I'm going to go ahead and write 48. And they have the unit and the cubed already written for me. But if it were not there, you would want to make sure you're very intentional about including the unit and the idea of cubes, which we see here with the three. Now we're going to take a look at Neil, the grass trimmer. He needs you to arrange the numbers from least to greatest. Now, the easiest way to do that, boys and girls, to make sure that we're comparing like place values is to line them up. Now, as soon as I look at this, I notice that there are some places that don't have partner place values. So I'm going to plug in some zeros there. Now, I want to know the least first. Okay, the least is actually going to be the first number in this. And even just taking a look at the whole number values, I right away have a winner for which one is the least. The least is this one right here that only has a four in my whole number position. So that's for sure the least. I also know which one is going to be the greatest because there's only one value whose whole number is for sure the greatest. It's in the 40s. We have 46. So I know that this one is actually going to be the last number in my list, which is like the fifth number in my list. Now, which one of these is the second, the third, the fourth? That's to be determined because I'm going to start with my largest place values. Well, my largest place value here, all three of those numbers have 20, right? Or a two in the tens. All three of these numbers have six in the ones. I take a look over here at the tens place. This one has one tenth. This one has one tenth. This one has a one tenth. The tenth place still doesn't give it away. When I look at the hundredth place, this one has six hundredths. This one has six hundredths. This one has six hundredths. That still doesn't give it away. I have to come all the way over here to the thousands. This is two thousands. This is three thousands. This is zero thousands. So I know this number is the smallest among those three or the second to smallest in my list. And then between these two thousands, is smaller than three thousandths. So this is gonna be the third number in my list and this is gonna be the fourth number in my list. Now this boys and girls is scrap work. To report numbers when I'm ordering decimals or ordering any number for that matter, I do want to write them out in a list with just a comma between them. So that's my first number. This is my second number. This is my third number, my fourth number, and my fifth number. So that is the answer to the ordering of decimals question. And I might draw a little line just to make it clear, but that's different than my scrap work. Okay, let's take a look here at Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart recorded her flight path and noticed that she had flown three and seven tenths miles north before turning and flying an additional four and two tenths miles east. How many miles did she fly in total? Since that says in total, I know that I'm going to combine those distances. Here I have three and seven tenths. Here I have four and two tenths. I'm going to add these together. Do I have my place values aligned? Yes. I know I do if those decimals are aligned because over here, the seven and the two are in the tenths place. Seven tenths plus two tenths equals nine tenths. Three plus four in the ones place equals seven tenths. And do not forget your decimal. So I am going to say that she flew seven and nine tenths miles. I can abbreviate miles with an M and an I. That is how far she flew. My next question, which is the last question for today, is asking us to multiply. We're trying out that standard algorithm. You could use grid multiplication, area multiplication. There are multiple strategies, but we should all arrive at the same answer. So let's try out that standard algorithm. This number four is like the center of this multiplication problem. We're gonna multiply it by the two, then the four, then the two, but it all pivots around this, 
okay? So we have four times two is eight. Four times four is 16. Here is my six, carry my one. Four times two is eight plus one is nine. So my answer here is 9,600, or excuse me, my answer here is 968. Now let's take a look at this problem. Again, the four is the first pivot point. Then after I finish letting the four hang out with the two and the four and the two, then I'm going to multiply over here by the one. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't this 242 times four sound familiar? I should find that they're going to have the same answer, right? Four times two is eight. Four times four was 16, and four times two was eight plus one was nine. Huh, that part is the same. But now we're going to cross off the four and anything that was carried from the four, and we're going to start multiplying by this one. Now that one is in the tens place, so I need my answer to that multiplication to also sit in the tens place, okay? That is why we use what we sometimes call magic zero, gold zero. It's really just math. We're starting this answer for the one in the tens. So our answer is going to start in the tens. Now, anything times one equals itself, including 242. So 242 times one is 242. But I could walk through the problem. One times two is two. One times four is four. One times two is two. Okay. Now I have two partial products. We're going to add these together. When we add these together, we get this, 3,388 as our answer for our Tuesday column of week.